Hi, it's Lee. Welcome to another Learn English with Lee pronunciation workshop video looking at second conditional. In the last video, we looked at connected speech and a little bit of intrusion to connect the words together to make you sound more natural. In this video, we're going to focus on the second thing which I mentioned, which is also really important, which is weak forms. The key to understanding weak forms is that typically a weak form will be made using one of two sounds. Usually it's the schwa sound who you should really get to know very well because he will be your best friend learning English. So the schwa is the uh sound. So for example when we say brother or sister the er at the end is a schwa. It's brother the sis and then sometimes, not as often as the schwa, but we get an i sound. So the sound that you get in ship or chip will sometimes be used to make a weak form. But to be honest, the majority of weak forms that you will probably say will use the schwa. So I really recommend becoming very friendly with Mr. Schwa. But what is a weak form? Well, the weak form is the opposite of a strong form. Uh, yeah, 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 Lee, very good, very good, very good. What's a strong form? Well, let's look at the example T-O. How would you pronounce this word, T-O? I think you will pronounce it as two. Am I correct? Well, you are not wrong, but two is the strong form form. And for this example, two, we only say, we only pronounce T-O as two 20% of the time. I know, shocking, right? So 80% of the time we pronounce this word in its weak form using Mr. Schwa and we will pronounce T-O as T. So if I say, I am going to bed, I won't say to bed, I'll say to bed. I'm going to bed. And already you can hear that it sounds much more natural using the weak form. But why do we have the weak forms? Well, it's a very important question and the answer is actually connected to the next video I'm going to do, which will look at sentence stress because the weak forms in a sentence are never stressed. And it's usually the kind of small grammatical words, uh, prepositions and conjunctions. So words like to and for, uh, and uh, or at. These words are usually pronounced t, f, at, and. But enough talk, let's have a look at our example and see what weak forms we can identify. Okay, so if I were an animal, Connected speech, if I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Connected speech, I'd be a wolf. Okay, so let's start with the conditional clause again. Listen very carefully. What schwa sounds can you hear? If I were an animal, if I were an animal, can you hear any? Actually, the first one is here. Not if I were an animal, the er uh sound becomes shorter, becomes weaker, becomes a. Uh. If I were, were, were. If I were an animal. Okay, okay, but there's one more in there. Okay, can you hear it? So, if I were an animal. If I were an animal. Can you hear it? Yeah. We don't say an. We say un. So wa becomes wa ra. If I were an animal. If I were an animal. Okay, repeat after me. If I were an animal. Good. One more. If I were an animal. Good. One more. A little bit faster. If I were an animal. Yeah, okay, very good. Okay, and what about the main clause then? I'd be a wolf, I'd be a wolf, okay? But I'm gonna say this really naturally. Listen very carefully, try to identify 
any schwas. I'd be a wolf. I'd be a wolf. Yeah, good. So one very important one is a. Ah. Okay, same here with an article. We usually don't pronounce this as a ah or a. It's usually a. Uh. Be a wolf. Be a wolf. And there's actually one more, if you listen very carefully. One more time. I'd be a wolf. I'd be a wolf. Yeah, right at the beginning, I don't say I'd be a wolf. I say I'd. I'd be a wolf. I'd be a wolf. Okay, so repeat after me. I'd be a wolf. Okay, one more. I'd be a wolf. Yeah, one more, a little bit faster. I'd be a wolf. Okay, so let's put both clauses together then. Okay, so if I were a Neymar, I'd be a wolf. Okay, we've got connected speech. Very good, we've got our weak forms. Okay, very good. So, if I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Okay, listen one more. If I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Okay, repeat after me. Three. If I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Cool, very good. One more. Two. If I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Good. One more, a little bit faster, a little bit more natural. If I were an animal, I'd be a wolf. Cool, yeah, very good. Okay, so that is actually quite tricky because again, I'm asking you to pronounce words which you thought you knew in a different way. We don't, we usually don't say to, we say t. We usually don't say a, we say a. Uh. We usually don't say an, we say un. We usually don't say for, we say for. So it takes a bit of getting used to. You need to change your brain. But the advantage is if you can do this, number one, you will sound much more natural, but also you will understand more because now you are listening for something which native speakers actually say. So the important thing is to practice, keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. Again, just watch a YouTube video and just as you're listening, try to hear any schwas, write it down and then practice saying it like the person in the video. It's a very useful technique and uh, lots of, I've seen lots of students do it very, very, very effectively. So this is my number one tip. Okay, so we have one more video in this uh, pronunciation workshop on second conditional series. So in the next video, we're going to look at sentence stress. So I hope to see you there.